Hi there. You're watching Full Metal Junkie. <laughs> okay. Oh, fuck me. This is Full Metal Monkey, and I am David Pickett here with Anders McCauley at Rick's in Bergen. Anders, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing splendid, my good man. <laughs> How's that apple? This is a great Nor uh, Norwegian apple from um, probably Hardanger. Mm. And uh, this is um, the end of the season, so it's very, f very uh, sweet. Very, not that um, uh, bitter, you know what I mean? Yeah. So sweet and it's, it tastes great, man. Good, good. And, I'm, and, and it's so good that I wanted to bring it into this interview. <laughs> and I actually want to talk about the Apple industry more than what we do, as <laughs> we're comedians. So I want to talk about Apple industry in Norway. And uh, Apple industry in Norway was fu uh, funded uh, f actually 15 years ago. It was owned by the Germans in Sudan. It was the last uh, last thing the Germans gave back to Norway, and uh, yeah, it's uh, the business is uh, booming. Um, what do you want to ask me, Dave? You're a stand-up comic. You've been doing stand-up for a while. You didn't you see that Apple bit? Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> he must be a comedian. <laughs> yeah. What what made you start wanting to do stand-up comedy? Um, I I I saw Eddie Murphy raw on TV uh, when I was very, very young. And I wasn't allowed to see it, but uh, in, uh, the room I had in, in, in our house, we had small, uh, you know, in wooden uh, walls, you have these small cracks and, you know, the, the bits and pieces fall out, you know, the, the dark little areas in the wood. So I, I took out and I watched Ed Murphy Raw and I heard this outrageous, like, because my dad's from Ireland and I've heard fuck and, Kant and I've heard all the the words. I know, you know, in a very young age, I knew all the words. So I heard this, uh, you know, black leather suit, you know, comedian Eddie Murphy. Just and I was just fascinated how we, you know, talk to people and how we could make people laugh. So I did, you know, I wanted to be funny as well. So I, uh, so I did comedy in, in the classroom, just like Jim Carrey. Uh, he had to, uh, you know, they had to fight him for a time, you know. So I had to do the same thing, and I did actually do Jim Carrey jokes in the classroom. I did uh, in li in living color stuff, and I, I did do that. And nobody understood understood what I was talking about because we were the first family in in Arna, where I'm from, that had a satellite dish. Mm. And my dad's from Ireland. He had to have the English TV, ah. right? So what I did was I I uh, I took Jim Carrey jokes, you know, uh, and, and did you know uh, Vera de Milo and stretch and stretch and stretch, and then the arm went behind the head and ah, 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 and I did you know I did all this crazy stuff and nobody understood nothing. They they couldn't do. Oh, he's doing a lot of stuff. We don't know what he's talking about, but he's he's funny-ish or I don't know. But I was just a weird guy, and. I did the act in front of my brothers and their friends because they've, you know, my brothers showed, my brothers showed their friends, you know, in Living Color and Eddie Murphy and all that. So then I made elder people laugh, but none of the people my own age. They couldn't, they couldn't, and they still don't laugh. <laughs> so, and then when I was 15 years old, a friend of mine, he bought an album, uh, a music album, uh, no, a magazine, Uncut where there was uh, a comedian called Bill Hicks at the last track from uh, his album called The Philosophy. And Bill Hicks died many years ago, but I've never heard Bill Hicks, so I'm 15 years old, never heard him. So I went into the town, they had the album, I started listening to it. Okay, so it was funny, and then it just built and built, and I was laughing my ass off in the record store. And... Uh, it was uh, it was so funny that I, I and then I started reading about Bill Hicks and the way and the struggling and all that. It was just a, like a rock and roll comedian, and I always played music. I played in a band and jamming and doing all that stuff. And then I suddenly just knew that 
Okay, I want to be a rock and roll comedian. I want to. I want to be. I want to be that guy. You know. I, I don't want to be. I don't want to be like uh, like Bill Hicks. But I want to be. You know that. I want to be a uh, rock and roll. That was my idea. People ask me, oh, when are you gonna do, you know, you talk about it a lot. So I talked about it for nine years before I dared ask Christopher here in Standard Bergen. I said, what, what, what do you have to do to get on stage? And he said, Oh, I know it's pretty, baby, but I didn't take it out for air. And I just wrote a set that I was, you know, thought was funny. And I uh, went on stage and it went okay. I actually have a recording from it the first time. And it wasn't that bad actually to be a, a, a beginner. And I did a second show and it didn't, didn't go that well. And then I did the third show. I bombed. I absolutely died on stage. Nobody was laughing. It was Harry Ricks. It was a full, full room, 200 people. And I thought, and I, and I went off stage and I said to myself, I'm not that guy that I th thought I was. You should have a tripod on that thing. Man. I know. You know I would what? like to have you in the frame. That yeah, would, it would yeah. be great. Um, I, the tripod's in Stavanger. Okay, but, but could we put a table on here and then, put, you know, put the cam? Could you take it on? Possibly. Pulse? We I tried that the other day and it didn't work uh, that well. No, okay. because it. Fuck it. I'm not able. It's your show. What am I? Who am I, dude? <laughs> What do I think I am? <laughs> Going on a talk show and start producing it. <laughs> am I crazy? <laughs> Jesus, no. can I give, can't you just do your thing without me trying to do anything? Who do I think I am? Do you know who I think I am? <laughs> He's a great guy. He needs he equipment, fucking man. Tripod. Just give him a fucking tripod, man. What's the, what's your problem? <laughs> give him a tripod. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so comedy, uh, yeah, it's a pride thing. It's a little egoistic, you know, uh, uh, ego. Is stick or egotistic? Egotistic, but I know what you meant. Yeah, egotistic to uh, to think like that. Oh, I want to be different. I want to, but but that was that's what I, I wanted to be different. But that's the thing in stand up, though, is that you're gonna you ultimately once you start working and doing clubs and moving around, you fall into a giant sea of people. Yeah, Norway is yeah. not not super saturated, but there are spots in uh, the U.S. where you're just one in a, in a sea of at least hundreds sometimes that are showing up to, for one show to but, try to perform. But this is what, what is interesting. It's because, you know, uh, people that are, you know, watching this now. I wanted to be just like the different people. No, but, <laughs> but I wanted to be different. I looked at the different people and said, I want to be, be like different. them. <laughs> But the thing is that maybe a lot of people don't think I'm different. And, uh, and many of them are probably right. Because doing this, it's kind of driving a car on the autobahn, you know, mm. like on a freeway, mm. really, really fast. But and when you've you know, been driving fast for two hours, it doesn't feel that fast anymore. No. You kind of, uh, what do you call it in English? You, well, you basically adapt to it. Kind of you thing. adapt to you it. You get used to it. So, uh, in Norway we call it fartsblind. You mm. get blind on the speed, you know, mm. you don't know how fast or what you're probably doing. Oh, right. So, so um, maybe, you know, because everyone, you know, you get influenced by what you watch on stage. You see all small mechanisms and probably, you know, like a comedian, you kind of copy that. It's without knowing it. Sure. Uh, the main objective is to write my own material. I know you do, and I know a lot of people do. Write their own material, material, and kind of just showing the audience, this is me. And I, I, I think that it takes many years to get there. Because being yourself on stage and for you who you know, are watching now, it is very, very difficult to be yourself on stage. Because you think that you can just go on stage and be yourself. It's so in incredibly uh, dif difficult. You know, it's a, it's a performance, you know, really. And n I, th I don't think uh, Louis C.K. goes on stage and just, he's so funny, he can say whatever. 
You know, I don't think anyone can do that. And, uh, and you have to, but, but they've learned how to be themselves performing. And that is very difficult. And I'm, I'm, still, I'm still struggling with that. I think it, it's, it's becoming comfortable being on stage. It's because you're always somebody different off stage than you are on stage. Mm. And shit, that's what people are paying money to see. Mm. You know, they want to see your best. You, you, know, you take all your best personality traits. But I, I think it's the stage time. Mm. I think it's being on stage and becoming comfortable. Louis's been at it for like 25 years. Yeah, and you've learned a couple of things. Oh, a trick he's or learned two. some stuff. A trick yeah. or two. He's been doing some stuff yeah, for yeah, quite yeah. a while, you know. Right now in April, shut down in May. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I want to I want to I want to I want to make babies with you, Dave. And I, <laughs> but I want the girl behind you as well. That's that's kind of the the whole thing. This interview is taking an interesting turn. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've, I've ended up with a proposal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, this is a great job when people laugh. It's a horrible job when people don't. And, but if you're willing to do that, you can make a million dollars. <laughs> Step right up. <laughs> Time machine, give it Time to me. Time machine, if this is, um, if you, if I could give you the use of a one-time use time machine, one round trip, you could go out and you could come back anytime in the yeah. past or the future, where would you go, what would you do, and why? I would go back what car, car am I driving? What kind of time machine is it? Oh, uh, I don't know. The only one that's ever posted You don't know? Whatever, who the only person ever... Who does the research on this program? <laughs> Eric wanted to get in. Eric, our photographer, it's Devonger that I host a, the show with. He's a great guy. He is, and, but he, he, was, he wanted to know. He started um, heckling one of our interviewees because he was kind of drunk and asked what, what the time machine looks like. <laughs> and all that we never... What color is it? And we never, we never Can got into it. Can I park it without making a scene? You know, is it like, uh, yeah, you, you should. We should do. We should do a little homework. You on should that, show yeah. me a painting. Yeah, if you travel back in time, what, uh, when did would you visit, and you know, and why? And by, uh, by the way, here's a drawing of the machine. <laughs> that would, I think that would, because that would kind of, um, that would kind of. Uh, uh, Bring the whole thing together. Yeah, it like would kind of paint you know, the picture. Like, uh, okay, I couldn't go back in time that far with this. That if would you, make too much of a scene. If you, know? you ask me, it'd have to be like a '67 Impala or something lower. Yeah, it's a car, it, right? Yeah, it'd yeah. have to be something like a lowrider. Because <laughs> you want to go back in time and style. You don't want to go back and look like a dick in a Prius. I don't know. Yeah, but it's hybrid. <laughs> Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> no, I, I don't. I would probably uh, go uh, go back to uh, Shakespeare and ask him. Are you writing your own material? <laughs> Have you been stealing for Francis Bacon? I want to see. I want to see the book, Sarah Shakespeare. Oh no, it's, it is my material. Oh yeah, really? Okay, so I'm gonna be with you now for now a week now. Okay, <laughs> so uh, are you writing any stuff now? Yeah, I'm writing this. Uh, you know, uh, 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 I don't know any Shakespeare. Well, uh, you know, King Lear. Hail to the king, baby. <laughs>